So we're in a really quiet little corner of the New Forest in a place called Crockford Bridge, which is about a mile south of the old Bewley Aerodrome, which is to the north just over that way. Um, and it's really a, a tranquil, lovely little bit of the forest with a meandering little brook running through it, um, open heathland and scrub growing up. This looks like a landscape that hasn't been altered for thousands of years, and certainly there's never been any forestry or cultivation that we've been able to see around this landscape. But there is this really interesting feature, which is just something you genuinely wouldn't accept, expect to stumble upon if you came walking through here. And that's these little features. And there's actually several of these big concrete blocks that straddle Crockford Brook just over there. So this is a really interesting bit of military history. And it's an interesting tale on how the, the war was carried out by the British military especially in the interwar years of, uh, sorry, the, the mid-war years uh, between Dunkirk and D-Day. And this was all part of our efforts to deceive the Germans as to what we were actually doing during those years. Because of German bombing raids along the south coast, very early in the war, in 1940 in fact, we started establishing a number of bombing decoy sites. And these were largely sites that were illuminated at night to try and draw German bombers away from our towns and cities. And these were codenamed Starfish and QL and QF sites. But very soon we realised that there was more potential for these. We could use them to mislead the German intelligence into the location of military installations and facilities. And in 1943, when the military were planning a big deception operation to try and make the Germans think that there would be an invasion on the south, uh, from the south coast of England towards the French coast in an effort to mislead German intelligence into thinking this is where an operation was going to be and distract them from actual operations in the Mediterranean and on the eastern front in Russia. Uh, they planned a number of these decoy sites all along the south coast which would be illuminated and uh, lit up at night to try and mislead German aerial reconnaissance into thinking there was a lot of activity around here. Now even though we're two miles inland, this was a decoy site that was built to try and represent the south coast. These concrete blocks that you can see actually formed a dam across the stream and there were four of these dams, the idea being to create big ponds just behind them. And you can see that the topography of this place is absolutely ideal for that because it's a, a low, flat valley. It would very easily flood if the stream was blocked. Uh, they were started in 1943. This one, which was codenamed 608, uh, was ready very early. And we know that because in 1943, January 1943, a German Luftwaffe reconnaissance plane took a photo of here, which shows these dams in place and water built up behind them to create these ponds. Then, all you need to do is shine a light on them at night and it will create the illusion of some sort of maritime facility on the coast. Now, this site was prepared very early, uh, but the main deception operations, codenamed Operation Cockade, weren't going to take place until the summer. And so we don't actually know if all of the necessary infrastructure, power generators and lamps were actually installed until the summer. But as it was, this site doesn't appear to have been used. And there's possibly a number of reasons for that. One, as I've already mentioned, Bewley Aerodrome is only a mile to the north. So this seems like a very odd place to put a decoy so close to a genuine military facility. There's people's houses only half a mile over that way. And as I said, the coast is actually two miles away. So it would have to be a particularly uh, unobservant aircraft pilot who hadn't spotted that he'd already crossed the coast before he came across this site. So, when Operation Cockade was launched, um, there's no reference to this decoy site actually being used. Um, but we know that it was built because the 1943 Luftwaffe photo tells us. But in 1946, by the time the RAF flew a reconnaissance flight over here, these dams had been broken, the ponds had disappeared and the stream was flowing again. And pretty much it's now exactly as it was in 1946 with the ruins of these dams on either side of the stream. This is just one of them. There's another one just up there where the stream has actually been rerouted around it and another two further downstream. There's small mounds in the landscape such as this one which may be the location of lamps that were installed here 
Um, it's very difficult to tell from the aerial photograph, but there's certainly evidence of works here. The ground has clearly been disturbed. So we're left with these quiet concrete mini monoliths on the side of the stream, which are just sat here in the middle of this very picturesque little valley, but testament towards the Allied war effort before D-Day. And these little reminders of what was happening in the Second World War are scattered all around the forest. And they're almost blending in with their environment now. You can see how the concrete has started to weather and almost take on a more natural shape. It could easily be mistaken from a distance as if it was actually a natural boulder lying in the stream valley itself. And I quite like coming across all of these little reminders of the Second World War in the forest because they, they are part of the forest's history. Although they are actually part of living memory and some people don't necessarily consider them to be archaeology per se, they're very much part of the living and working heritage of this fascinating landscape. So this dam had a little bit of a V shape to it. Um, and since 19, well, in 1946, obviously, the dam was breached and this gap was created. But since then, the stream has actually been rerouted, and now runs well to the side. So both of these concrete blocks are on the same side of the river. You can see some of the, the construction involved. So we've got a metal pipe here, which is probably used to establish the, the sort of um, timber planking that would have been used to create the moulds to build the concrete in. And you can see that actually there are other aspects. They weren't just using concrete. It looks like they were throwing bricks in there as well to help solidify this concrete block. Um, so these were very rough and ready facilities. They weren't built with any uh, huge amount of, of care and attention. They, they were very quickly constructed, very roughly made but they only had a very simple function to fulfill, and that was just to block the stream. And they did that very well, as we can see from the aerial photographs. And once you've got a pond, it really doesn't matter how deep it is, um, because at night, with a light shining on it, nobody's going to be able to guess its depth or even its extent. The light only needs to really shine on a little bit of the water, and that could mislead a pilot who could be several thousand feet above into thinking that he's actually looking at our coast and this is the light of an embarkation hard where troops might be embarking onto vessels. And from that, he might conclude that this is part of this huge Allied effort to invade France in 1943 and hopefully distract German intelligence away from what's actually happening in the Mediterranean with Operation Husky, the invasion of Sicily, about to be launched at exactly the same time. As it happens, Operation Cockade wasn't really a success. The Germans don't appear to have been misled into what was happening here in the slightest. Their attention was very much on what was happening in the Mediterranean. And uh, from all of the post-war reports, it's very evident that they never once thought that we were really going to invade France in 1943. Certainly none of the false preparations that we were making on the south coast made them think that. So with the shifting hydrology of this stream over time, you can see how some of the, the broken up concrete has actually been washed down and then become slightly embedded in this, this bank as the stream has changed course just here. And it almost looks as if it's part of the natural geology. Surrounded by all of those gravels, uh, which are part of the natural layer here, the concrete almost perfectly blends in. And I wouldn't be surprised if actually a lot of the concrete was actually mixed on site using gravel from this immediate area to cut down on the amount of equipment that would have had to have been brought down here. The timber shuttering uh, was obviously held in place with the metal piles, but as I said, they appear to have used all manner of things to sort of fill up the concrete, including bricks. Um, so they would have probably just used local gravel, poured it into the, the shuttering mix and and they complete their dam. And so by breaking the dams up, the, the gravels are almost being returned to their natural environment.